Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to our series Remix Done Right. Today I'll be talking about something we already did on the project, but I want to show you a new way to do it that is a bit better than what we were doing before, and it relies on wheat to do it. So today we'll be talking about icons and how to handle them better than before. And if I switch to my browser, the approach I use on the Remix e-commerce project is an article from Jacob Paris, and it goes over how to use SVG sprite icons in React. And this article is geared towards React, but the Vite plugin we're gonna use is usable across all frameworks because it generates only the sprite sheet and optionally TypeScript types so it's not really tied to React. As long as you have a project that can use SVG sprites you're good to go and optionally TypeScript if you want the types. So this article here it explains why and how to use svg sprites to generate icons and basically what an svg sprite sheet is is a bunch of these images like this mario here and it's a bunch of images get all gathered in a single svg file and you use them by having these special keywords called use and you specify the id of the image you want to use for example if these were number from one to whatever you would do one for the first one two for the second one and so on and if you read this sentence here i won't go into all the reasons why as other folks have already done a great job of explaining it but in general it's an inefficient and increases the size of your bundle dramatically and what he's talking about here is if we click this link and if you look at this tweet here, you can see that the 50% of the bundle size is allocated to SVG icons. And that amounts to 250 kilobytes of size, which is huge. And the reason why we want to use sprite sheets is to lower this amount. And another benefit that you get from this is because, well, this depends on the way you handle it. But if you have multiple SVG icons, you're going to be probably making multiple HTTP requests to fetch them. And what this means is you're going to also lower the speed of your application because you're firing off network requests to fetch additional bundles that you need to in order to show your icons this is also inefficient for obvious reasons because you're gonna be fetching additional javascript code just to show your icons and if we go back to the article Jacob goes into detail here on how you set it up and how it works and the first thing he does is he creates a folder for icons and he uses his CLI called slide to fetch the icons and I think this CLI is great for fetching icons and you should definitely give it a go. It's super simple to add icons from any popular icon websites here and after that he goes into details on how this works. So he creates a list of icons in your app and he creates a script file that is going to generate the icons for you and it compiles them into a single sprite sheet and if you're interested I'll link this in the video description so you can go over it in details and I definitely recommend that you do that because this is a great article and it really goes in depth and how it all works and it's going to be crucial for you to understand but I'm going to skip over it now because I will assume that you have read it through. The cool thing about all of this is that I've implemented a Vite plugin that does this all for you and now we're gonna switch back to our VS Code instance and we're gonna go over how this Vite plugin works. So before we actually implement it let's go back to the browser first and let's go to that package and the package name is Vite plugin icon Spr sprite sheet and if I install this I'm gonna run npm install here and I'm gonna install it as a dev dependency and now that I have it installed let's first go over the old approach. So as you can see here in the scripts I have this icon script and whenever I run this it's going to generate the icons for you and if I go to script slash icons and I open up this file this is the script that you can find in the article that I just showed you from uh, Jacob Paris. And basically what this does, it, it generates the sprite sheet for you. It takes an input directory, output directory, and you manually change this here and here, and then use that to output it. And if we scroll to the bottom, you have this generate types, and this generates the types for you. So whenever I run this, what it's gonna do is, it's going to go into the app slash library slash icon slash icons 
and then output this sprite sheet here and I have the preview here but you can't see it without actually using this because it's special kind of SVG that doesn't really render anything until you actually use the symbols it has. The second thing it generates is the types here and because I only have one icon in my project it generates only this and that's it. And how this works is every time when I add a new icon, I change something or I delete an icon, I have to run npm run icons and it says it generated the sprite sheet for you. As you can see, this is a great approach, but the issue is we want it to run seamlessly and we don't really want to think about it and if I should run it or not and stuff like that. And this is where the plugin I just installed comes into play. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to import that plugin. So it's called icons sprite sheet from with plugin icons sprite sheet and what I'm gonna do next is pop it in here and now we need to give it the configuration so our input directory is going to be the directory where our icons are located so in this project that is going to be resources slash icons the output directory is going to be the directory we want to output the icons to so that's going to be app slash library slash icon slash icons we want to output the types as well and we want the name to be icon.svg all right and now when we run our development server and then we go here and let's say we we want to change something in this icon let's say I want the stroke width to be 1 and I save this you can see that no SVG files were found in here and that's because the path here is not relative so we need to do this and now if I change it again to be 2 and save it you're gonna see that we generated the SVG sprite sheet in app library icons and it generated the icon types in here. So if I open this up, you can see that the new generated types are here. And if I open the icon SVG here, it generated the SVG. So let's say I add a new icon and let's say I call it plus. And then inside of plus SVG, I'm going to add a new icon and save it. And we can see it generated it again. And if we open this up, we can see the new type has been added. And the new icon has been added here as the second symbol here. And let's say I want to remove the width and the height. I'm going to select these. I'm going to remove them. I'm going to save this. We generated the sprite sheet again. And it's been regenerated. And whenever you change something inside of here, it's going to regenerate the icons for you and you don't have to worry about anything and because this is a dev dependency and only runs in development you're going to be pushing the icon svg to your github anyways which means you don't really need it in production it's only going to be a dev dependency it's going to regenerate your icons to the latest ones whenever you run the development server and you have your sprite sheet handling in place and now the best thing about it is because we have that in place inside of root tsx here we can uncomment all of this and what i do here is i import the sprite we generate the url of it from the output location and then i preload it here and then i save this and if i open up localhost 3000 and then i inspect it and then i go to the network and i refresh this and we find the icon svg here and if you look at it it's 145 bytes and it took 11 milliseconds to load it and the best thing about this is it doesn't exponentially grow and your svg is probably going to stay under the one kilobyte range and if you think about one kilobyte compared to 250 that we had before you can obviously see why this is an advantage but now this really depends on your icons and their sizes but i what i can guarantee is that it's going to be definitely smaller than the JSX approach. And the best thing about it is you have it as a width plugin. You don't have to worry about it. It's auto generated and regenerated for you. So all you have to do is go to your width config, pop, pop in this plugin, and it does everything for you. And if you go back to the editor, and if we go to width here, as you can see, 
all it takes is six lines of code to have your spreadsheet generated you don't need to run any third-party scripts you don't need any manual work you don't have to worry if your icons are up to date or not because whenever you run the development servers they'll be updated for you and that's it i hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful if you did consider subscribing i'll be uploading a bunch of more of these videos and thank you for watching see you in the next one bye